ओके तो ये डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस के नाम पे ये पीडीएफ और ये भेजना है इसके मटेरियल देखो गवर्नेंस वाला जो भी है डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस एंड द डेवलपमेंट इंडस्ट्री तो मैंने सिलेबस में चेक किया तो ऐसा लिखा है डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेसेस एंड द डेवलपमेंट इंडस्ट्री द रोल ऑफ एन जी ओज एस एच जी वेरियस ग्रुप्स एंड एसोसिएशन डोनर्स चैरिटीज इंस्टीट्यूशनल एंड अदर स्टेक होल्डर्स ये सिलेबस में दिया हुआ एग्जैक्टली तो ये वाला जस्ट एक हेडिंग है जी एस टू पेपर के अंदर तो हम इसको देखेंगे यहाँ पर क्या कहे देखो डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस है तो व्हाट इज डेवलपमेंट एंड डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस देन ए सिविल सोसाइटीज तो व्हाट आर सिविल सोसाइटीज सिविल सोसाइटी इन इंडिया टाइप्स ऑफ सिविल सोसाइटीज इन इंडिया देन है एन जी ओज सो व्हाट आर एन जी ओज टाइप्स ऑफ एन जी ओज रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ एन जी ओज रोल ऑफ एन जी ओज इन डेवलपमेंट रोल ऑफ एन जी ओज इन प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ एनवायरमेंट चैलेंजेस फेस्ड बाई एन जी ओज इन इंडिया तो एन जी ओ बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है स्टेट वर्सेज एन जी ओ सजेशन टू इम्प्रूव दी वर्किंग ऑफ एन जी ओज नेशनल पॉलिसी ऑन वॉलेंटरी सेक्टर सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप है वॉट इज वॉट आर एस एच जी हाउ डज एस एच जी फंक्शन इवोल्यूशन ऑफ एस एच जी इन इंडिया बेनिफिट्स ऑफ एस एच जी जनरल इशूज रिलेटेड टू एस एच जी एंड सोशो कल्चरल हार्डल्स इन पेनीट्रेशन ऑफ एस एच जी इन रूरल एरियाज मेजर्स टेकन बाई द गवर्नमेंट टू प्रमोट दी एस एच जी सजेशन टू इम्प्रूव दी वर्किंग ऑफ एस एच जी एड एंड प्राइवेट फंडिंग इन डेवलपमेंट डेवलपमेंट एड इन इंडिया फॉरन एड टू इंडिया फॉरन फंडिंग एंड एन जी ओज फॉरन एड फ्राम इंडिया देन माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन सो वाट आर माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन रोल ऑफ माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन इन डेवलपमेंट इशूज रिलेटेड टू माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन सजेशन टू इम्प्रूव दी वर्किंग ऑफ माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन देन सोसाइटीज ट्रस्ट डोनर्स चैरिटीज एंड अदर स्टेक होल्डर सोसाइटीज ट्रस्ट रिलीजियस एंडोमेंट्स एंड वर्कस ये क्या है डब्ल्यू ए क्यू एफ एस अच्छा ये पहले बार सुन रहा हूँ क्या होगा प्रोनाउंसिएशन वाक्स वाप्स क्या होगा अरे ट्रस्ट रिलीजियस एंड डोमेंस एंड वाक्स इन इंडिया देन ट्रेड यूनियंस और उसके बाद है प्रीवियस ईयर का कुछ क्वेश्चन दिया हुआ है और फिर प्रीवियस ईयर विजन आई एस जी एस मैंस टेस्ट का क्वेश्चन आंसर दिया है बहुत तो हम यहाँ तक पढ़ेंगे ये वाला जो भी है ट्वेंटी सिक्स पेज तक पढ़ेंगे हम चलिए तो देखिए डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस व्हाट इज डेवलपमेंट एंड डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस डेवलपमेंट क्या है डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस क्या है ए मल्टीट्यूड ऑफ मीनिंग्स हैव बीन अटैच टू द टर्म डेवलपमेंट इट इज मोस्टली कन्फाउंडेड विथ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ ऑल्सो लार्जर मीनिंग्स सच एज सोशल डेवलपमेंट सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट एंड ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट आर एट्रीब्यूटेड टू इट इन सिंपल टर्म्स डेवलपमेंट इज ब्रिंगिंग अबाउट सोशल चेंज दैट अलाउज पीपल टू अचीव दियर ह्यूमन पोटेंशियल Development is a process rather than an outcome. It is a dynamic in that it involves a change from one state or condition to another. Ideally, such a change is a positive one and improvement of some sort. For instance, milestones development in a child. Amartya Sen has given the concept of development a new dimension. He views development as a political process. According to Sen, development consists of the removal of various types of unfreedoms that leave people with little choice and little opportunity of exercising their reasoned agency. Dimensions of development. Development as a political process. It is regarded as the something that is done by some agency, state, or development organization. For others, such as farmers in a developing country, it is called political process as it raises questions about who has the power to do what to whom, who has the power to do what to whom. Then, human development. Amartya Sen has been advocator of this approach. It considers economic growth as measure of development a deeply flawed and inadequate approach. It redefines the development in terms of human rights as a constitutive part, and all worthwhile processes of social change are simultaneously rights-based and economically grounded. This approach focuses on the well-being of those at bottom of the society, not on the efficiency of those at the top. सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट यहाँ पर देखो यूटिलाइज द स्किल्स एंड नॉलेज ऑफ द लोकल पीपल इन एल ई टी सी इज लेबर इज एन एवंटेंट रिसोर्स एंड शुड भी यूटिलाइज स्कीम्स शुड बिकम सेल्फ सफिशियंट एंड नॉट रिक्वायर कॉन्टीन्यूड फाइनेंशियल और कैपिटल इनपुट्स फ्राम आउटसाइड इन्वॉल्व लोकल कम्युनिटीज इन द डिसीजन मेकिंग प्रोसेस एनश्योर टेक्नोलॉजी और मशीनरी कैन बी मेनटेन इजिली एंड चीपली प्रोजेक्ट शुड हैव मिनिमल एनवायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट एनकरेज एफिशियंसी एंड रिसाइकलिंग विद इन ऑल स्कीम्स ट्रेन लोकल पॉपुलेशन हाउ टू मेंटेन एंड रिपेयर मशीनरी और यूज टेक्नोलॉजी करेक्टली 
सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट आवर कॉमन फ्यूचर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड ब्रांड लाइन रिपोर्ट डिफाइन सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट एज डेवलपमेंट दैट मीट्स द नीड्स ऑफ द प्रेजेंट विदाउट कॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग द एबिलिटी ऑफ फ्यूचर जेनरेशन टू मीट देयर ओन नीड्स टू अचीव इट इवन हैज एस्टेब्लिश सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स एस डी जीज ए वाइड रेंजिंग टारगेट टू बी अचीव बाई ट्वेंटी थर्टी दी गोल्स एंड टारगेट आर यूनिवर्सल मीनिंग दे अप्लाई टू ऑल कंट्रीज अराउंड दी वर्ल्ड नॉट जस्ट पुअर कंट्रीज रीचिंग द गोल्स रिक्वायर्स एक्शन ऑन ऑल फ्रंट गवर्नमेंट बिजनेस सिविल सोसाइटी एंड पीपल एवरी हायर ऑल हैव ए रोल टू प्ले इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इज द प्रोसेस बाय विच ए नेशन इम्प्रूव्स द इकोनॉमिक पॉलिटिकल एंड सोशल वेलबींग ऑफ इट्स पीपल इट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ इन अ सेंस दैट इट इन्वॉल्व्स बोथ क्वांटिटेटिव एंड क्वालिटेटिव चेंज आल्सो इट इज प्रोसेस बाय विच लो इनकम नेशनल इकोनॉमीज ट्रांसफॉर्म इन मॉडर्न इंडस्ट्रियल इकोनॉमीज क्वांटिटेटिव एस्पेक्ट्स इंक्रीज इन पार कैपिटल इनकम क्वांटिटेटिव एज वेल एज क्वालिटेटिव एस्पेक्ट्स इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ वर्सेज इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट तो जब इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट की बात आएगा तो क्वालिटेटिव एस्पेक्ट आ जाएगा ना सोशल डेवलपमेंट सो सोशल डेवलपमेंट मीन्स इन्वेस्टिंग इन पीपल इट रिक्वायर्स द रिमूवल ऑफ बैरियर सो दैट पीप ऑल सिटीजन्स कैन जर्नी टूअर्ड दैट ड्रीम सो इथ कॉन्फिडेंस एंड डिग्निटी इट इज अबाउट रिफ्यूजिंग टू एक्सेप्ट दैट पीपल हु लिव इन प्रॉपर्टी विल ऑलवेज बी पुअर इट इज अबाउट हेल्पिंग पीपल सो दे कैन मूव फॉरवर्ड ऑन दियर पाथ टू सेल्फ सफिशियंसी इन इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स इट बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एट सोशल बैरियर्स लाइक कास्ट सिस्टम प्रूव्स टू बी फेटर्स टू रियलाइज वंस पोटेंशियल एंड एन्जॉय सोशल फ्रीडम रिमूवल ऑफ सच बैरियर थ्रू स्टेट एक्शन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ सोशल डेवलपमेंट तो मैं देखो एक डायग्राम दिया गया है कि आका चाहिए तो कल्चरल डेवलपमेंट सोशल इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इंस्टीट्यूशनल डेवलपमेंट फिर सोशल स्ट्रेंथ डेवलप होगा सोशल हेल्थ डेवलप होगा और फिर स्टेबिलिटी सपोर्ट टॉलरेंस देन इंटीग्रेशन फ्रीडम हेल्थ इक्वालिटी जस्टिस प्रॉस्पेरिटी सिक्योरिटी ये सब मिलाकर होगा एथिकलिटी एंड सस्टेनेबिलिटी और उसके बाद आएगा सस्टने सोशल डेवलपमेंट तो ये था डेवलपमेंट एंड डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस हमने पढ़ा ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट सोशल डेवलपमेंट इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट है ना ये सारे सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट डेवलपमेंट एज ए पॉलिटिकल प्रोसेस ये सब डायमेंशन था ठीक है आप देखे हो सिविल सोसाइटीज तो व्हाट आर सिविल सोसाइटीज अकॉर्डिंग टू दी वर्ल्ड बैंक सिविल सोसाइटी रेफर्स टू ए वाइड एरे ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कम्युनिटी ग्रुप्स नॉन गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेबर यूनियंस इंडिजिनस ग्रुप्स चैरिटेबल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फेथ बेस्ड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रोफेशनल एसोसिएशन एंड फाउंडेशन ग्लोबली द टर्म सिविल सोसाइटी बिकेम पॉपुलर इन नाइनटीन एट्टीज वैन इट स्टार्टेड टू बी आइडेंटिफाइड विथ नॉन स्टेट मूवमेंट्स डिफाइंग अथॉरिटरी एंड रिजिम स्पेशल इन ईस्टर्न यूरोप एंड लैटिन अमेरिका when mobilized civil society sometimes called the third sector after government and commerce has the power to influence the actions of elected policy makers and businesses examples of well known civil society organizations include amnesty international the international trade union confederation worldwide fund for nature acha to worldwide fund for nature ek civil society hai greenpeace and the danish refugee council following representation illustrate various factors that are important for survival and sustainability of civil society to organize hona chahiye organic hona chahiye interest and urgency structure and systems ke basis par organized hoga civil society ko system then relevance legitimacy accountability foreign policy interventions scalability replicability legal and regulatory practices resources hona chahiye civic space hona chahiye governance and leadership bhi hona chahiye तीसरे फैक्टर से कि एक सिविल सोसाइटी सस्टेन करेगा अब सिविल सोसाइटी इन इंडिया सिविल सोसाइटी ड्राइव इट स्ट्रेंथ फ्रॉम द गांधीन ट्रेडिशन ऑफ वॉलेंटियरिज्म बट टुडे इट एक्सप्रेसेस इट सेल्फ इन मेनी डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ एक्टिविज्म इन डिप इन इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया द इनिशियल रोल प्लेड बाय द वॉलेंटरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्टार्टेड बाई गांधी एंड हिज डिसाइपल वॉज टू फील इन दी गैप्स लेफ्ट बाई द गवर्नमेंट इन द डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस द वॉलेंटियर्स ऑर्गेनाइज हैंडलू मूवर्स इन विलेजेस टू फॉर्म कोऑपरेटिव्स थ्रू हुई दे कूड मार्केट देयर प्रोडक्ट डायरेक्टली एंड गेट बेटर प्राइस अमूल ए डायरी कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटी इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ सच कोऑपरेटिव मूवमेंट सिविल सोसाइटी प्लेज अ क्रूशियल रोल इन द गुड गवर्नेंस एज इंडिया इज नॉट ए पार्टिसिपेटिव डेमोक्रेसी बट अ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव डेमोक्रेसी गवर्नमेंट टेक्स ऑल मेजर डिसीजन बाई इट सेल्फ सिविल सोसाइटी एक्ट एज इंटरफेयर इंटरफेस ऑफ इंटरेक्शन बिटवीन गवर्नमेंट एंड द गवर्न good governance means that processes and institutions produce results that meet the needs of society while making the best use of resources at their disposal civil society's functional contribution to good governance could be 
watchdog against violation of human rights and governing deficiencies advocate of the weaker section's point of view agitator on behalf of aggrieved citizens educator of citizens on the right on their rights entitlements and responsibilities and the government about the pulse of the people service provider to areas of and people not reached by official efforts or as government agent mobilizer of public opinion for or against a program or policy civil society acts through social capital the capacity of people to act together willingly in their common long term interest social capital is strong in homogeneous egalitarian society now types of civil societies in india based on the law under which the csos operate and the kind of activities they take up civil society groups in our country can be classified into following broad categories as given in second arc registered societies formed for specific purposes charitable organizations and trusts local stakeholders groups micro credit and thrift uh, enterprises shgs professional self regulatory bodies cooperatives <coughs> bodies without having any formal organizational structure government promoted third sector organizations however a broader classification including all non government and not for profit organizations can be civil rights advocacy organizations to promote human rights of specific social groups example women migrants disabled hiv sex workers dalit people tribal people and the likes civil liberties advocacy organizations to promote individual civil liberties and human rights of all citizens rather than focusing on particular social group community based organizations citizens group farmers cooperatives to increase citizens participation on public policy issues so as to improve the quality of life in a particular community business and industry chambers of commerce to promotion policies and practices on practices on business labor unions to promote the rights of employees and workers international peace and human rights organizations to promote peace and human rights media communication organization to produce disseminate <coughs> or provide production facilities in one or more media forms it includes television printing and radio national resources conservation and protection organizations to promote conservation of natural resources including land water energy wildlife and plant resources for public use private and public foundations to promote development through grant making and partnership the civil society also includes political parties religious organizations housing cooperatives slum dwellers and resident welfare associations non governmental organizations ngos what are non governmental organizations then ngo is a non profit group that functions independently of any government civil society when organized in structure and specialized in function takes the form of ngos the like civil society jab specialized kuch kaam karta hai usko hum ngo bolte hain they are organized on community national and international levels to serve a social or political goal such as humanitarian causes or the environment characteristics of ngos it is an organization of private individuals who believe in certain basic social principles they structure their activities to bring about development to communities they are servicing it is a social development organization an independent democratic non sectarian people's organization working for the empowerment of economic and or socially marginalized groups an organization not affiliated to political parties evolution of ngos in india period pre independence social welfare activities kya kya karte the social welfare constructive work inspired by gandhian philosophy very much in line with independence movement then 1950 to 1970 tak social welfare government funded and managed ngo like khadi industries acha to khadi industry ek ngo hai government funded and managed ngo hai acha then five years development plans came into existence most of the development works were registered with ngos 1970 se lekar 1990 civil society space started increasing from 70 gens started highlighting why government program are not yielding positive results for poor and marginalized presented new model for development with people's participation with this new model ngos covered vast program areas like education primary health care drinking water sanitation small education forest regeneration tribal development women's development child labor pollution safety etc later on many of these models are included in government program and policies 1990 से लेकर 2005 थाउजेंड फाइव तक जियो एन जी ओ पार्टनरशिप गॉट अ बूस्ट इन दिस पीरियड एन जी ओज जियो मीन्स गवर्नमेंट किया गया एन जी ओज गेट मोर फोकस्ड ऑन सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स माइक्रो क्रेडिट लाइफ लीहुड एन जी ओ पार्टिसिपेशन इज एनसीड इन पॉलिसी फॉर्मेशन एंड प्रोग्राम इम्प्लीमेंटेशन दैन टाइप्स ऑफ एन जी ओज इन द नाइनटीन एटी थ्री डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ एन जी ओ वॉलेंटरी मूवमेंट एमर्ज इन इंडिया 
ट्रेडिशनल डेवलपमेंट एन जी ओ दीज एन जी ओज डायरेक्टली एंगेज विद दी पब्लिक एट लार्ज सो गो टू दी विलेजेस ट्राइबल एरियाज एंड कैरी आउट ग्रास टू डेवलपमेंट वर्क रिलेटेड टू एजुकेशन हेल्थ सैनिटेशन रूरल डेवलपमेंट एट्सेट्रा एग्जाम्पल ट्रीटमेंट सेंटर फॉर लेप्रोसी पेशेंट्स रान बाय बाबा एम ते इन सेंट्रल इंडिया एक्टिविस्ट एन जी ओ सो दे सी एक्टिविजम एज देर प्राइमरी मीन्स ऑफ रीचिंग देयर गोल्स बिकॉज दे डो नॉट बिलीव दे कूड गेट दी अथॉरिटीज टू मूव इन एनी अदर वे पर एफ दी बेस्ट नॉन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एन एन जी ओ इन दिस कैटेगरी इज द नर्मदा बचाव आंदोलन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट अपोज दी कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ ए सीरीज ऑफ लार्ज टाइम्स इन ए लार्ज रिवर वैली ऑफ सेंट्रल इंडिया देन रिसर्च एन जी ओ दे कैरी आउट इंटेंसिव एंड इन डेप्थ एनालिसिस ऑफ टॉपिक और इशू एंड लॉबी विद दी गवर्नमेंट इंडस्ट्री और अदर एजेंसीज टू इन्फ्लुएंस पब्लिक पॉलिसी एग्जाम्पल सेंटर फॉर साइंस एंड एनवायरमेंट विच एंगेज इन एनवायरमेंट रिलेटेड वर्क हाउर दिस क्लासिफिकेशन इज नॉट स्ट्रिक्ट एंड डिजिट दिज एन जी ओज कीप टेकिंग मल्टीपल वर्क दैट कैन भी कैटेगराइज इन वन कैटेगरी और दी अदर एन जी ओज कैन ऑल्सो भी क्लासीफाइड ऑन दी बेसिस ऑफ होम दी एन जी ओज डिजाइन टू बेनिफिट दी बेनिफिशियरी व्हाट दी एन जी ओ डाज दर इज एक्टिविटी फॉलोइंग इज स्कीमेटिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ हाउ ए सिंगल एन जी ओ कैन हैव मल्टीपल एक्टिविटीज एंड बेनिफिशियरीज टू सेल्फ एंड अदर सो एल्कोहलिक एनोनीमस चेस क्लब्स अदर सेल्फेशन आर्मी केयर सर्विस क्या है लेबर यूनियन स्टेट एसोसिएशन डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एमनेस्ट इंटरनेशनल टाइप ऑफ एक्टिविटी रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ एन जी ओज इंडियन एन जी ओज मेनली कम्स अंडार थ्री सेगमेंट सोसाइटीज ट्रास्ट चैरिटेबल कंपनीज सोसाइटीज ट्रास्ट चैरिटेबल कंपनीज तो ट्रास्ट भी एक एन जी ओ है सोसाइटी भी एन जी ओ है और चैरिटेबल कंपनी भी एन जी ओ है सो सोसाइटीज क्या सोसाइटीज हैव टू रजिस्टर अंडर दी सोसाइटीज रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्ट एटीन सिक्सटी प्राइवेट ट्रस्ट आर रजिस्टर अंडर दी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इंडियन ट्रस्ट एक्ट एटीन एटी टू एंड पब्लिक वॉन्स आर रजिस्टर अंडर द स्टेट रजिस्ट्रेशन कॉन्सर्न चैरिटेबल कंपनीज दे आर सेट अप अकॉर्डिंग टू सेक्शन एट ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट ट्वेंटी थर्टीन फॉर चैरिटेबल कंपनीज द कंप्लाइंस रिक्वायरमेंट्स आर हाई एज लोन्स एंड एडवांस आर इजीली अवेलेबल टू देम कंपेयर टू ए ट्रस्ट और ए सोसाइटी दे हैव टू इवन पे इनकम टैक्स अंडर आई टी एक्ट नाइनटीन वन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन फॉर एन जी ओज इन इंडिया आर्टिकल नाइनटीन वन सी ऑन द राइट टू फॉर्म एसोसिएशन आर्टिकल फोर्टी थ्री हुई हाईलेट दी हाईलेट दी स्टेट्स हैविंग एन एन डी टू प्रमोट कोऑपरेटिव इन रूरल एरिया रूरल एरिया concurrent list in entry 28 mentions about charities and charitable institutions charitable and religious endowments and religious institutions part 9b cooperative society state list entry 32 role of ngos in development in developing countries in india like india there are numerous gaps left by the government in the development process these gaps are filled by ngos work where state is unwilling to work for example caste is an issue that no government wants to fiddle with the persistence of caste hierarchy suits the vote banks for the politicians in the process humne dekha ki eci ko recommend kiya tha ki isme action lena chahiye but koi action nahi liyega 2010 mein ki iske basis par wo vote campaign chalte hai uske regarding hum jab wo representation of people act pare tab tha wahan par hai na ओके सो इन द प्रोसेस लॉज प्रोहिबिटिंग डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ कास्ट और ऑफ एन इग्नोड अनलेस देयर इज एन एन जी ओ वर्किंग इन द एरिया दैट इज विलिंग टू टेक अप द कॉज ऑफ दोज बिंग डिस्क्रिमिनेटेड अगेंस्ट वर्क हर स्टेट रिसोर्सेज आर इन एडिकुएट टू मेन सच एरिया इंक्लूड एडुकेशन एंड हेल्थ केयर दे आर नॉट इन अफ गवर्मेंट ट्रम स्कूल्स और हॉस्पिटल्स स्पेशली इन रूरल एरियाज इवन इफ दे आर प्रेजेंट दे डो नॉट हैव रिसोर्सेज द एन जी ओ ट्राई टू कॉम्प्लीमेंट एंड कम्प्लीट दीज इनिशिएटिव द मेमोथ एन जी ओ कॉल्ड केरला शास्त्र साहित्य परिषद इज लेर्जली क्रेडिटेड फॉर द हंड्रेड लिटरेसी रेट इन दैट स्टेट अच्छा तो केरला का लिटरेसी रेट ज़्यादा है बहुत हाइस्ट है तो उसके पीछे एन जी ओ भी है देखो केरला शास्त्रो साहित्य परिषद बोल रहे हैं कि लार्जली क्रेडिटेड फॉर दी हंड्रेड परसेंट लिटरेसी रेट इन दैट स्टेट इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ वेलफेयर स्कीम सो एन जी ओज ड्यू टू प्रॉक्सिमिटी टू जनरल पब्लिक वर्क एज इंटरफेस बिटवीन गवर्नमेंट एंड द इंडिविजुअल्स द एन जी ओज प्ले थ्री रोल्स ऑफ इम्प्लीमेंटर ए कैटलिस्ट एंड ए पार्टनर इन द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट वेलफेयर स्कीम फाइटिंग सोशल एबल्स इट इज ड्यू टू दी एफर्ट्स ऑफ एन जी ओज दैट गवर्नमेंट हैज बैंड सेक्स डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ फोटस एज इट लीड्स टू एबल्स लाइक एबोर्शन ऑफ फीमेल फोटस then right to shelter ngos such as uva and spark in cities like mumbai have repeatedly opposed the demolition of hut mens even as they try to improve the quality of life in the sprawling slum clusters right to information it is because of the, of the efforts of ngos that rti has become reality in india to sab ngo ne hi kiya hai 
है ना बहुत बड़ी बड़ी कंपनी को ट्राइबल राइट्स एजुटनेस इन द वेदांता भर्सेस पॉस्को केस एन जी ओज हैव रेज वॉइस अगेंस्ट द डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ऑफ ट्राइबल बाय द मल्टी नेशनल मेनी ऑफ दीज एन जी ओज हैव पार्टनर्ड विद द ग्राम पंचायत इन प्रॉपर इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ एक्ट्स लाइक फॉरेस्ट राइट्स एक्ट कंपा एक्ट एट्सेट्रा कम्युनिटी डेवलपमेंट लोकल नेशनल एंड रीजनल एन जी ओज हैव इमर्स एज मेजर प्लेयर्स एंड पार्टनर्स इन डेवलपमेंट एक्टिविटीज इन द रीजियन एट द कम्युनिटी लेवल दे आर इन फ्रंट लाइन इन प्रोवाइडिंग असिस्टेंस इन द एक्विजिशन ऑफ बेसिक नीड्स एंड एम्यूनिटीज इन आइडेंटिफाइंग इशूज रेजिंग अवेरनेस एंड इन आर्टिकुलेटिंग द कम्युनिटीज प्रॉब्लम्स रिहेबिलिटेशन एन जी ओज डिड रिमार्केबल जब पोस्ट टू थाउजेंड फोर सुनामी बेसाइड्स हेल्पिंग इन रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन एन जी ओज ऑल्सो सेट अप वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स रोल ऑफ एन जी ओज इन प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ एनवायरमेंट द रैपिड ग्रोइंग एंड इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इज लीडिंग टू ए नंबर ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल इशूज इन इंडिया इन ऑर्डर टू डील विद इंक्रीजिंग डैमेज टू एनवायरमेंट मेनी नॉन गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैव बिन सेट अप दे प्ले अ क्रूशियल रोल इन हेल्पिंग टू प्लैक गैप्स बाई कंडक्टिंग रिसर्च टू फैसिलिटेट पॉलिसी डेवलपमेंट बिल्डिंग इंस्टीट्यूशनल कैपेसिटी एंड फैसिलिटेटिंग इंडिपेंडेंट डायलॉग विद सिविल सोसाइटी टू हेल्प पीपल लिव मोर सस्टेनेबल लाइफ स्टाइल्स द इशूज लाइक फ्यूचर ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन सस्टेन डेवलपमेंट एंड जीरो पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ आर सम ऑफ दी मेजर कॉन्सर्न ऑफ दी एनवायरमेंटल एन जी ओज मेजर कैंपेन्स बाई एन जी ओज क्लाइमेट चेंज प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ प्रिस्ट इन फॉरेस्ट प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ मैरिन लाइफ एंड डाइवर्सिटी एगेंस्ट होलिंग एगेंस्ट जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग और जी एम ओज प्रिवेंशन ऑफ न्यूक्लियर थ्रेट टू विल्ड लाइफ एलिमिनेशन ऑफ केमिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल टॉक्सिक वेस्ट एनकरेजमेंट ऑफ सस्टेनेबल ट्रेड एट्सेट्रा एन जी ओज कैरी आउट मास अवेरनेस कैंपेन्स ट्री प्लांटिंग ट्राइब्स promoting ecologically sustainable practices for waste removal like vermin culture and composting भारमिन होगा भारमी होगा इंस्टेड ऑफ डम्पिंग इन लैंड फील्स सपोर्टिंग द यूज ऑफ साइकिल्स एंड ग्रीन रिन्यूएबल फ्यूल्स इंस्टेड ऑफ फॉसिल फ्यूल्स मेनी एन जी ओ स्पेशलाइज इन डेटा ड्रिवेन सपोर्ट टू गवर्नमेंट बॉडीज सोइंग क्वान्टिफाइबल प्रूफ दैट एनक्रॉचमेंट अपन बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड वाटर बॉडीज इज डेंजरस देयर रिपोर्ट्स बिकम द बेसिस ऑफ मीडिया अटेंशन एडुकेटिंग द मासेस एंड इवेंचुअली मोल्डिंग ओपिनियन ग्लोबली एन जी ओज हैव दी पावर टू ब्रिंग अबाउट ग्लोबल ट्रिटीज इंक्लूडिंग रिफॉर्म्स टू एड्रेस रेगुलेशन ऑफ हेजर्डस वेस्ट बैंस ऑन लैंड and control of greenhouse gases and emissions the center for science and environment for example has been a leading light on pollution toxins in food and beverage and other key areas some major environmental ngos in india are green pace wwf bombay natural history society development alternatives group the energy research institute this is india ka hai some major environmental ngos wwf world wide fund india mein hai ye acha green pace india ka hai hai na देन देखो बार्ड लाइफ इंटरनेशनल द सेंटर फॉर साइंस एंड एनवायरमेंट सो चैलेंजेस फेस्ट फॉर एन जी ओज इन इंडिया पहला तो लैक ऑफ फंड्स मोस्ट ऑफ द एन जी ओज इन इंडिया आर सफरिंग फ्राम पॉजिटिव ऑफ फंड्स गवर्नमेंट डज नॉट गिव सेंट पर्सन ग्रांट्स इन एड और मेक डिले इन सेंक्शन ऑफ ग्रांट्स फॉर न्यूमरेज प्रोग्राम्स एन जी ओज हैव टू मेक मैचिंग कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन विच दे आर समटाइम्स अनबल टू मैनेज एंड आर दे आर फॉर अनबल टू एवेल दम सेल्स ऑफ द ग्रांट्स corruption and misuse of funds it is common experience that there have been serious charges of misuse and misappropriation of funds received as grant in area to bahut bada problem hai from the government uh, from the government then foreign donors and raised through their own resources by the most of the ngos these ngos may reflect its image to other ngos who are working with dedication and commitment inadequate trained personnel it is expected that the personnel working in ngo shall have a sense of dedication and commitment and interest in the social services lack of professional trained personnel is one of the major challenges faced by ngos in india inequality in rural areas ngos are more developed in urban areas as compared to rural areas the backwardness and ignorance of the rural people and lack of enthusiasm among social workers to among them in the absence of availability of minimum comforts are the two important reasons for the backwardness of the NGOs. using to rural areas lack of volunteerism or social work among youth the basic characteristics of ngo is volunteerism the extent of volunteerism is declining day by day and turning it into professionalization even the young graduates from social work are interested in making their career in professionalism this leads to lack of efficient volunteers in ngos in state versus ngos india has witnessed boom in ngo sector according to a conservative estimate by the central bureau of investigation there is one ngo for every 600 citizens in india to so, samajh lo kitna ngo hai to misuse of funds to hoga milega to aur agar to fund milne bhi dikkat hoga but there is accountability deficit with ngos in india yes accountability deficit hai. responding to a pil filed in supreme court cbi said that many don't submit details of receipt of grant and spending to tax officials 
इन सुप्रीम कोर्ट इनक्वारी मेजर स्टेट्स लाइक आंध्र प्रदेश बिहार दिल्ली हरियाणा कर्नाटक राजस्थान वेस्ट बंगाल उड़ीसा तमिल छत्तीसगढ़ हिमाचल प्रदेश कोड नॉट प्रोवाइड डिटेल्स रिगार्डिंग एन जीओ वर्किंग इंडिया टेरिटरी दिस लार्जली एक्सप्रेस द रेगुलेटरी मेकानिजम ऑफ द एन जी ओस इन इंडिया द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन ट्वेंटी सेवेंटीन ऑर्डर Thirty lakh NGOs, wow, and voluntary organizations that receive public funds but fail to explain their spending. Samayre hote hi aur hai. A PIL has shown that NGOs do not have a transparent mechanism in place to monitor funding. A CBA report that compiled statewide data of thirty-two lakh NGOs revealed that only ten percent of NGOs filed annual income and expenditure statements. So thirty-two lakh se lakh me se ten percent. मतलब कितना हुआ? Thirty-two thousand. इंटेलिजेंस ब्यूरो इन अ रिपोर्ट एक्ट यूज फॉरन फंडेड एन जी ओज ऑफ सर्विंग एज टूल्स फॉर फॉरन पॉलिसी इंटरेस्ट ऑफ वेस्टर्न गवर्नमेंट्स बाई स्पॉन्सरिंग एजुटेशन अगेंस्ट न्यूक्लियर एंड क्वालिफाइड पावर प्लांट्स एंड एंटी जी एम एजुटेशन अक्रॉस द कंट्री एन जी ओज आर सेट टू बी वर्किंग थ्रू अ नेटवर्क ऑफ लोकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू नेगेटिवली इम्पैक्ट जी टी पी ग्रोथ बाई टू टू थ्री परसेंट इट ऑल्सो एलेज दैट ग्रीन पीस वॉज लीडिंग अ मैसी बी फोर टू टेक डाउन इंडिया कोल फायर पावर प्लांट एंड कोल माइनिंग एक्टिविटी बाई यूजिंग फॉरन फंड टू क्रिएट प्रोटेस्ट मूवमेंट्स अंडर कोल नेटवर्क अम्ब्रेला टू एट प्रोमिनेंट कोल ब्लॉक एंड कोल फायर पावर प्लांट लोकेशन इन इंडिया इन अप्रिल ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन दी गवर्मेंट ऑफ इंडिया से एड अ लिस्ट ऑफ ओवर फोर्टी टू थाउजेंड एन जी ओज विच फाइनेंशियल इंटेलिजेंस यूनिट to check suspicious foreign funding amid the crackdown on some top international donors for flouting the foreign contribution regulation act 2011 for the first time the common clearly defined the sectors in which it has listed christian missionaries hindu sikh and muslim religious groups receiving foreign contribution besides other activities of ngos in which funds are claimed to be utilized there is also suspicion that money launderers could use the legitimate route to wire illicit money suggestions to improve the working of ngos relaxing regulations the rules and regulations of grants in aid should be liberalized by the government and sanction more grants to ngos but misuse to ho raha hai bhai to give more grants kis liye monitoring agency at the same time the government should appoint commission of enquiry or committee to cross check the misuse of funds by ngos ha pehle ye zaruri hai monitoring pehle zaruri hai uske baad fund dena hoga The member of committee has to supervise and monitor the activities of NGOs periodically, increasing awareness. So, young graduates from universities, colleges, and schools should conduct the public seminars, meetings, etc., and use the local media to advertise the importance of volunteerism, success stories of NGOs, and encourage people to participate in volunteerism, collaboration, and cooperation. So, universities, colleges, and schools should collaborate with NGOs and conduct a campus interview. for the young graduates who are interested in volunteerism nss and ncc should encourage students to participate in volunteerism from childhood age onwards so focusing on rural areas in india 60 per 5% of populations belong to rural areas ngos therefore need to operate in rural areas but our urban areas mein zyada hai on a bigger scale to enlist the cooperation of village people in making their lives better at the same time the changes should encourage the educated young graduates of rural areas to participate in volunteerism the government should also give some special provisions for ngos who are working in rural areas in getting eligibility conditions for grants appreciate efforts of ngos ngos being a welfare organization should maintain high standard of quality in service the government also should recognize those ngos by giving awards or rewards with additional grants this should motivate the other ngos to work efficiently technology intervention the ngos should use of latest technologies like internet websites etc ये सब तो कह ही रहे होंगे फॉर एजिंग ऑफ देर फंड टू हैव म्यूचुअल एसोसिएशन टू एडवर्टाइज देर प्रोडक्ट्स एंड फॉर द सिलेक्शन ये बेकार की रिकमेंडेशन हो गया अब इंसेंटिव फॉर पर्सनल द गवर्नमेंट शुड रिवाइज द पे स्केल्स एंड अलाउंसेज टू द पर्सनल ऑफ एन जी ओज एट द सेम टाइम सम स्पेशल फंड टू बी एलोकेटेड फॉर द एन जी ओज टू ट्रेन द पर्सनल ऑफ द ग्रास टूट लेवल नेशनल पॉलिसी ऑन वॉलेंटरी सेक्टर नेशनल पॉलिसी ऑन वॉलेंटरी सेक्टर टू थाउजेंड सेवन इज ए कमिटमेंट टू एनकरेज एनाबल एंड एम्पावर एंड इंडिपेंडेंट क्रिएटिव एंड इफेक्टिव वॉलेंटरी सेक्टर सो दैट इट कैन कंट्रीब्यूट टू दी सोशल कल्चरल एंड इकोनॉमिक एडवांसमेंट ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया इन द पॉलिसी वॉलेंटरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन पी ओ एज मीन टू इंक्लूड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंगेज इन पब्लिक सर्विस बेस्ड ऑन एथिकल कल्चरल सोशल इकोनॉमिक पॉलिटिकल रिलीजियस स्परिचुअल फिलंथ्रॉफिक और साइंटिफिक एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल कंसिडरेशन वी ओ एज इंक्लूड फॉर्मल एज वेल एज इनफॉर्मल ग्रुप सच एज कम्युनिटी बेस्ड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नॉन गवर्नमेंटल डेवलपमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन चैरिटेबल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सपोर्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नेटवर्क और फेडरेशन ऑफ सच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज वेल एज प्रोफेशनल मेम्बरशिप एसोसिएशन
to be covered under the policy voh should broadly have the following characteristics they are private separate from government they do not return profits generated to their owners or directors they are self governing that is not controlled by government they are registered organizations or informal groups with defined aims and objectives objectives of the policy creating an enabling environment for voluntary organizations that not only stimulates their effectiveness but also protects their identity and safeguards their autonomy enabling voh to legitimately mobilize the necessary financial resources from india and abroad identifying systems by which the government may work together with the voluntary sector then encouraging voh to adopt transparent and accountable systems of governance and management this national policy on the voluntary sector 2007 envisage to initiate a process of process to evolve a new working relationship between the government and the volu- voluntary sector without affecting the autonomy and identity of us enabling environment for the functioning of voluntary sector all laws policies rules and regulations relating to us categorically safeguard their autonomy while simultaneously ensuring their accountability voluntary organizations may be registered as societies as charitable trust or as non-profit companies under central or state laws some states have adopted the societies registration act 1860 with amendments while others have independent laws in order to encourage transfer of shares and stock options to vos the government will consider suitable tax rebates for this form of donation the government will also simplify and streamline the system of system for granting income tax exemption status to charitable projects under the income tax act at the same time the government will consider tightening administrative and penal procedures to ensure that these incentives are not misused by paper charities for private financial gain and or paper charity ha huh? it is important here an organization seeking foreign funding must be registered under the foreign contribution regulation act this law prescribes stringent screening norms that often restrict the ability of voh to avail foreign funds so in approved there are problems like funds must be held in a single bank account that presenting enormous difficulties to voh working at different locations the government will review the fcra and simplify its provisions that apply to voh there would be formal systems for registering complaints and for redressing grievances of voh analysis most of the policy changes used in the npps 2007 were not implemented though the directions were framed at framed after extensive consultations with multiple stakeholders the idea of a national accreditation agency for not profits organization was proposed but nothing has been done in this regard the policy made a call for self regulation transparency and accountability by the ngos but the recent sc judgments and ib reports suggest otherwise also the diverse character of a voluntary organization militates against a single uniform regulatory authority now to the ngos ke bare mein tha ab self help groups what are shgs self help groups is a method of organizing the poor people and mar- the marginalized to come together to solve their individual problem the shg method is used by the government ngos and others worldwide the poor collect their savings and save it in banks in return they receive a sa- easy access to loans with a small rate of interest to start their micro unit enterprise a shg is defined as self governed peer controlled information group of people with similar socio economic background and having a desire to collectively perform common purposes how does shg is function an shg normally consists of not less than 5 persons with a maximum of 20 of similar economic outlook and social status the members of the group help each other to solve their problems a reasonably educated but helpful local person takes the lead in mobilizing these people to form a group the person called animator or facilitator helps the group members develop the habit of thrift and promote small savings among them the group savings are kept in a common bank account from which some small loans are given to members after 6 months the shg can approach any bank for availing loan facility to undertake a suitable entrepreneurial activity the group loan is distributed among the members to run a small business the loan is repaid out of the profits earned but yahan par problem ye hota hai ki personally mere ko pata hai ki shg group se loan uthata hai wo log kabhi log gaon ka jo log hote hai wo घर का घर का खर्चा चलाते हैं उससे और ये जो प्रॉफिट की बात मतलब बिजनेस तो स्टार्ट नहीं करते वो पैसों से फिर प्रॉफिट कहाँ से आएगा और फिर वो जो इंस्टॉलमेंट होती है वो भरने के लिए उनको फिर उधार मांगना पड़ता है बाद में तो ऐसा भी होता है ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ एन एस 
इट्स अ स्मॉल इकोनॉमिकली होमोजीनियस एंड डेफिनेटिक ग्रुप ऑफ रूरल पीपल हु हैव कम टुगेदर वॉलेंटरली सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप ठीक है देन टू सेव स्मॉल अमाउंट्स रेगुलरली टू म्यूचुअली एग्री टू कंट्रीब्यूट टू कॉमन फंड टू मीट देयर इमरजेंसी नीड्स हाँ ये अच्छा ऑप्शन होगा कि इमरजेंसी केसेज में इसको इस्तेमाल किया जा सकता है बट वहाँ पर भी दिक्कत होगा क्योंकि टेन मेम्बर होगा या फिर ट्वेंटी मेम्बर होगा तो हर लोग राजी नहीं होंगे उस इमरजेंसी के लिए सपोज किसी एक इंडिविजुअल मेंबर को ज़रूरत पड़ गया तो फिर बाकी हो सकता है कि उसमें कंसेंट ना दे हैव सिंपल एंड रिस्पॉन्सिव रूल्स एंड कलेक्टिव डिसीजन मेकिंग मार्केट ड्रिवेन रेट्स ऑफ इंटरेस्ट कोलेट्रल फ्री लोन्स ये एक अच्छा चीज़ है कि लोन लेने के लिए ये लोन का फैसिलिटी अच्छा है ठीक है अभी वी टर्म डिसाइडेड बाई द ग्रुप है ये कैसे होगा भाई ये टर्म तो बैंक डिसाइड करते हैं नो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट सॉल्विंग थ्रू कलेक्टिव लीडरशिप एंड म्यूचुअल डिस्कशन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट सॉल्विंग थ्रू कलेक्टिव लीडरशिप एंड ये सब चलता है देन देखो इवोल्यूशन ऑफ एस एज इन इंडिया इवोल्यूशन ऑफ एस एज इज एज ए टूल टू एम्पावर यू इज एज लॉन्ग एज द हिस्ट्री ऑफ डेवलपमेंट सेक्टर इन इंडिया एस एज इज एज एन ऑर्गेनाइज वे फॉर प्रॉपर्टी एराडिकेशन वॉज इमर्ज ड्यूरिंग दी सेवन्थ फाइव ईयर प्लान तो ये सेवन्थ फाइव ईयर प्लान में ये इमर्ज हुआ था एस एच जी जो प्लान है नाइनटीन एटी फाइव फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एस एच इज फॉर सेविंग्स एंड क्रेडिट एंड देर लिंकेज टू कमर्शियल बैंक वॉज इनिशिएटेड इन इंडिया बाई मेराडा माइसोर रिसेटलमेंट एंड डेवलपमेंट एजेंसी एंड एन जी ओ इन द मिड नाइनटीन एटीज तो देखो ये भी एन जी ओज ने ही किया था हावर एस एच जी एज ए टूल टू एड्रेस प्रॉपर्टी बिकेम सिग्निफिकेंट ऑनली फॉर इन द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया इशू द सर्कुलर इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू टू लिंक अबाउट फाइव हंड्रेड ग्रुप्स अंडर दी नाबार्ड एस एच जी बैंक लिंकेज पायलट प्रोग्राम This success has led to mainstreaming of SHGs into the financial landscape, and especially the Indian banking system, with about 94 million poor linked with banks through 7.5 million SHGs availing them of collateral free credit. The poor women of these SHGs in India collectively control the financial business with an annual turnover of rupees one one lakh crore, one lakh crore means. 17 billion dollar acha 1 lakh crore means 17 billion dollar so much larger than many multinational corporations in india then simultaneously a handful of large indian ngos have demonstrated that collectivization can lead to social and economic empowerment of the group in their age to of health bridging caste divides and gender inequality as a part of the poverty alleviation measures the government of india launched the saran joint saran joint gram swaraj ka yojana in april 1999 where the major emphasis is on shg formation social mobilization and economic activation through micro credit finance This success led to the genesis of a massive community mobilization initiative by the government of India as National Rural Livelihoods Mission. In 2011, benefits of SHGs mobilized women from rural areas. According to the estimates, about 46 million rural poor women are mobilized through SHGs architecture. These organizations have been an effective vehicle, especially in providing financial intermediation solutions for unbanked rural women. Socio-economic benefits it includes economic self independence participation in village affairs and awareness about education special focus on the national rural livelihood mission special attention has been given to women living below poverty line the scheme has also focused on capacity building and institutionalization of sag it has also helped in social mobilization institution building communalization and creation of human resources improve the status of women in family and society regular process of group meetings helps women build social capital which raises the status in the family and the society ha ye ek achhi baat hai it also leads to economic empowerment which helps them take decision making role in the family that help them breaks cycles of patriarchy improves health and standard of living a research has so <coughs> also shown that women particip- practicing पार्टिसिपेटिव लर्निंग एंड एक्शन सो फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट रिडक्शन इन मैटरनल मोर्टिलिटी एंड थर्टी थ्री परसेंट रिडक्शन इन न्यू नैटरल मोर्टिलिटी जेनरल इशूज रिलेटेड टू एस एच जी एग्रीकल्चरल एक्टिविटीज मोस्ट ऑफ द एस एच जी वर्क एट लोकल लेवल एंड एंगेज इन एग्रीकल्चरल एक्टिविटीज एस एच इन रूरल शुड भी इंट्रोड्यूस टू नॉन एग्रीकल्चरल बिजनेस हाँ टू एंड शुड भी प्रोवाइडेड विथ स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट मेशनरी 
lack of technology most of the sages work with rudimentary or no technology access of market also the goods produced by sage do not have access to large marketplace poor infrastructure most of these sages are situated in rural and far reach areas that lack connectivity via red road or railway access to electricity dimension issue lack of training and capacity building most of the sages work on their own without outreach from the state for skill development and capacity building politicization uh, so political affiliation and interference has become a serious problem with sages political affiliation is also a major reason for group conflicts credit mobilization study has shown that about 48 percent of the members are to borrow from local money lenders relatives and neighbors across the um, uh, neighbors because they were getting in adequate loan from groups also issues like hoarding of money was witnessed system of monitoring the general reports on the progress of sag so statistics of growth and spread of sages without questioning the process and the internal health of the sages then livelihood promotion there is need to evolve a methodology for promoting micro enterprise among sag members that can be replicated on a large scale socio cultural hurdles in penetration of sages in rural areas so there has been uneven distribution in the <coughs> spread of sages in india socio cultural factors along with government support and presence of ngos have been major reasons for that in march 2001 71% of the linked sig were from southern region consisting of andhra pradesh karnataka kerala and tamil nadu tamil nadu kar diya while while poor performing states are also those states which have high incidence of poverty like up and bihar these are also the states where society is deeply entrenched in patriarchy with limited financial and social role for women also the spirit of entrepreneurship is discouraged in a feudal society the traditional society dictates strict role for male and female members with little scope for independent decision making and economic freedom due to family responsibilities majority of the women members cannot give their attention to their enterprises one of the major hurdles in lack of support from family members due to male dominated society women members could not uplift their business followed by lack of social mobility there is no stability of the units as many married women are not in a position to associate with the group due to the shift of their place of residence in many sag strong members try to earn a major share of the profit of the group by exploiting the ignorance and illiterate members measures taken by the government to promote the sags self help group bank linkage program on the recommendations of sk kalia committee the sag bank linkage program was started at the initiative of nabard in 1992 to link the unorganized sector with the formal banking sector under this program banks were allowed to open savings accounts for self help self help groups <coughs> banks provide loans to the sags against group guarantee and the quantum of loan could be several times the deposits placed by such sags with the banks banks should consider entire credit requirements of sag members namely income generation activities social needs like housing education marriage etc and debt swapping it is being implemented by commercial banks regional rural banks and cooperative banks sag bank linkage program the rbi took a series of measures in april 1996 to give a thrust to microfinance based lending under the sag bank linkage program for instance banks are advised to consider lending to the sags as part of their mainstream credit operations to identify branches having potential for linkage with sags and provide necessary support services to such branches while including the sag lending within their service area plan over 103 million rural households have now access to regular saving through 7.96 million sags linked to benefit priority sector lending government of india has included sag as a priority sector to mandate and enhance banks focus on them bank credit to members of sag is eligible for priority sector advance under respective category uh, like agriculture micro small and medium enterprises social infrastructure and others then grain banks 
SHGs have been allowed to run grain banks to secure the food security in food and care regions. Then Priya Darshini scheme with NABAD as the nodal agency has aimed at women empowerment and livelihood enhancement through SHGs. Dindal Antodaya Yojana National Rural Livelihoods Mission it seeks to alleviate rural poverty through building sustainable community institutions of the poor. Mission closely works with the Department of Financial Services, Reserve Bank of India and the Indian Bank Associations to provide bank credit to SHGs. <coughs> the financial year 2017-18 had seen more than 82 lakh households mobilized into 6.96 lakh self-help group across the country. Cumulatively, more than 4.75 crore women have been mobilized into more than 40 lakh SHGs. The mission also provides interest subvention to women SHGs availing bank loans amounting to rupees 3 lakhs to subsidize the cost of borrowing. The interest subvention effectively reduces the cost of borrowing to 7% per annum. Mohila Kisan uh, Sasakti Karan Pariyajana In order to promote agroecological practices that increase women farmers' income and reduce their input costs and risk, the DAYNRLM mission has been implementing the Mohila Kisan Sasaktikaran Pariyojana as of March 2018, more than 33 lakh women farmers are being supported under this scheme. Some other successful initiatives taken by the state governments are Kudumb Sri in Kerala, Jibika in Bihar, Mohila Arthik Vikas Mohamandal in Maharashtra. Suggestions to improve the working of SHGs. An integrated approach is required for meeting overall credit needs of a poor family in terms of backward linkages with technology and forward linkages with processing and marketing organizations. Credit needs to be provided for diversified activities including income generating livelihood activities, productions, housing consumption, loan and against certain cal calamities. Simplify the process of giving loans, that is reduce the number of questions to important non-repetitive ones. The delivery system has to be proactive and should respond to the financial needs of the farmers. Training programs relating to management of finances, maintaining accounts, production and marketing activities etc. should be given. Provide gender sensitization training to bank staff so that they are sensitized to the needs of rural clients, especially women. Adequate insurance coverage should be provided to the business units promoted by SIG against the financial losses to safeguard the interest of the entrepreneurs. Aid and private funding in development. Development aid in India. Development aid. We are topic start over. Aid and private funding in development. Development aid in India. Development aid is financial aid given by governments and other agencies to support the economic, environmental, social, and political development in developing countries. It involves long term strategy to alleviate poverty. Foreign experts call India a development paradox. India is one of the largest economies with high growth rate. It spends substantial amount on the defense expenditure, yet it seeks development aid. It has created quite a debate at international level. Uh, corruption. Foreign grants, often in dictatorial states in Africa, were siphoned by government officials for private. It has also bred numerous non-performing NGOs. Identification of projects. A very great deal of money has been wasted in the past because proposals have not been sufficiently investigated before aid was granted and because priorities have not been correctly established. Influence recipient countries. Aid donors are often accused of trying to exercise unnecessary influence over recipient governments and the policies they undertake. Debt serving. In the global economic slowdown, many countries have not been able to service their debt. Foreign aid to India. The term foreign aid is derived from the concept of overseas development assistance or ODA. In UN parlance, ODA is a commitment assumed by developed countries, members of the OECD, to extend development assistance to developing countries. Currently, developed countries are committed to transferring 0.7% of their GDP as ODA. Currently, developed countries are committed to transferring 0.7% of the GDP as ODA to developing countries, though few have achieved this target. Um, 
The India was the sixth largest recipient of foreign aid in 2011 and continues to be one of the highest recipients. According to the data on World Bank's website, it received uh, $3.2 billion in 2011, $1.6 billion in 2012 and $2.4 billion in 2013. The top donors have been World Bank, Japan, Germany, Asian Development Bank, United Kingdom, France, Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, United States and European Union. यहाँ पर देखो बोला फॉरेन एड कैन वेन यू टेक मनी फ्रॉम द पुअर पीपल इन ए रिच कंट्री एंड गिव इट टू द रिच पीपल इन ए पुअर कंट्री क्या ये मजाक है या आई थिंक कार्टून ही होगा ना ये कोई इसको ये कर रहा है कि मॉक कर रहा है क्या बोलते उसको जो भी है Top donors have been okay. Para India has also been giving aid to other countries. It has a foreign aid budget of uh, 1.6 billion dollar for the period 2015-16. However, in recent times, foreign aid coming to India has declined significantly. It partly due to India's rapid economic progress and partly due to ever-changing geopolitical axis. U.S. aid to India, targeted toward clean energy, food security, and health, has dropped 25 percent in recent years from nearly 117, 127 million dollar in 2010 to proposed uh, 98.3 million dollar in 2013. In 2015, U.K. stopped giving aid to India owing to its economic growth. Indian government welcomed the move by suggesting that aid is past, trade is future. India now sees. Sees and projects itself as a global power and a partner to developed nations like Britain, rejecting the traditional model of rich nations aiding poor ones. Now, foreign funding and NGOs, being non-profit organizations, NGOs entirely depend upon contribution, foreign or domestic, for their functioning. In recent times, many NGOs have come under the government scanner. The Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010 FCRA and Foreign Contribution Regulation Rules 2011 FCRR framed there under regulate the receipt and usage of foreign contribution by non-governmental organizations and Jews in India. Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010 This Act replaced the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 1976. The Act seeks to regulate the acceptance and utilization of all foreign funds through donations gifts or grants the 1976 act lists a number of organizations and individuals that are prohibited from accepting foreign contribution the bill adds organizations of a political nature and electronic media organizations to the list the act requires all persons to register under fcra to accept foreign contribution the central government may deny suspend or cancel certification under certain conditions organizations must renew fcra certification every 5 years it prohibits acceptance and use of foreign contribution or foreign hospitality by a certain specified category of persons such as a candidate for election judge journalist columnist newspaper publication cartoonist at all the act prevents use of foreign contribution or foreign hospitality for any activity detrimental to the national interest the foreign contribution shall be utilized for the purpose for which it has been received and such contribution can be used for administrative expenses up to 50% of such contribution received in a financial year every bank shall report to such authority as may be prescribed the amount of foreign remittance received sources and manner and other particulars every ngo registered or having prior approval Approval under the Act must file an annual report with the authority in the prescribed form. This report must be accompanied by an income and expenditure statement, receipt and payment account, and balance sheet for the relevant financial year. For financial years when no foreign contribution is received, a NIL report must be furnished with the authority. New provisions have been made for suspension as well as cancellation of registration granted for violation of the provisions of the Act. The Act has a very wide scope and is applicable to a natural person, body corporate, all other types of Indian entities, 
whether incorporated or not as well as nris and overseas branches subsidiaries of indian companies and other entities formed or registered in india it is implemented by the ministry of home affairs government of india recent issues with fcra act and impact on the ngos in 2018 fcra registration of nearly 19000 ngos were cancelled and they were barred from receiving foreign funds also it was highlighted that 2547 ngos have not adhered to that due to government orders to submit their pending annual returns income and expenditure receipts of funds from abroad abroad and balance sets of all the total funds that are coming 13 percent is for contentious issues like religious institutions and awareness campaign government is terming uh, terming both as anti-national activity as religious institutions are fueling terrorist activities and awareness campaign are targeting developmental projects of government experts have signaled towards a paradox where india promotes fdi but throttles contribution to ngos in the past similar bans were put by communist countries like russia and Hungary and IB report blamed NGOs for slump in India GDP. It is also accused that some Christian NGOs are engaged in uh, proselytization. Proselytization. US based NGO Compassion International was um, put on priority list by the government. In 2018, the government relaxed penalties on NGOs violating FCRA norms. From now on, instead of suspension or cancellation of licenses, hefty fines will be levied on NGOs. These fines will not be applicable retrospectively. Finance Bill 2016 inserted an amendment that shielded political parties from violating the norms of FCRA. The amendment was brought after a case was filed in Delhi High Court regarding donations made to BGP and INC by London-based multinational Vedanta. In March 2018, the Parliament through Finance Bill 2018 amended the Repeal Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 1976 retrospectively. The aim is to exempt political parties from scrutiny of funds they have received from abroad since 1976. It must be reiterated that the Representation of the People Act and the FCRA bar political parties from receiving foreign funds. Foreign firms can now fund NGOs in India as well as the political parties. The FCRA Amendment 2020 The inflow of foreign contribution has doubled between years 2010 and 2019 and there have been numerous cases of misuse and misapportion, misappropriation of funds leading to the government cancelling 19,000 registrations in the past few years. Faced with this situation, the FCRA Amendment 2020 is brought in by the Centre to strengthen the compliance mechanism, enhance transparency and accountability in the receipt and utilization of foreign contribution to ensure that foreign money is not used against national interest or anti-national activities, and facilitate genuine non-governmental organizations or <coughs> associations who are working for the welfare of the society. Major Amendments Prohibition to accept foreign contribution Under the Act, certain persons are prohibited to accept any foreign contribution. These include election candidates, an editor or publisher of a newspaper, judges, government servants, members of any legislature, and political parties, among others. The bill adds public servants as defined under the Indian Penal Code uh, to this list. Public servants include any person who is in service or pay of the government or remunerated by the government for the performance of any public duty. Transfer of foreign contribution. Under the Act, foreign contribution cannot be transferred to any other person unless such person is also registered to accept foreign contribution or has obtained prior permission under the Act to obtain foreign contribution. The bill amends this to prohibit the transfer of foreign contribution be sent to any other person. The term person under the act includes all individual and association or a registered company. Other for registration. The act states that a person may accept foreign contribution if they have obtained a certificate of registration from central government or not registered but obtained prior permission from the government to accept foreign contribution. Any person seeking registration or renewal of such registration or prior permission for receiving the foreign contribution must make an application to the central government in the prescribed manner. The bill adds that any person seeking prior permission, registration or renewal of registration must provide the other number of all its office bearers, directors or key functionaries as an identification document. In case of a foreigner, they must provide a copy of the passport or the overseas citizen of India 
card for identification fcra account under the act a registered person must accept foreign contribution only in a single branch of a scheduled bank specified by them however they may open more accounts in other banks for utilization of the contribution the bill amends this to state that foreign contribution must be received only in an account designated by the bank as fcra account in such branch of the state bank of india new delhi as notified by the central government no funds other than the foreign contribution should be received or deposited in this account restriction in the utilization of foreign contribution under the act if a person accepting foreign contribution is found guilty of violating any provisions of the act or the unutilized or unreceived foreign contribution may be utilized or received only with the prior approval of the central government this amendment bill also seeks to prohibit the transfer of fcra funds to other persons or organizations the bill adds that the government may also restrict usage of unutilized foreign contribution for persons who have been granted prior permission to receive such contribution this may be done if based on a summary inquiry and pending any further inquiry the government believes that such a person has contravened provisions of the act renewal of license under the act every person who has been given a certificate of registration must renew the certificate within 6 months of expiration the bill provides that the government may conduct an inquiry before renewing the certificate to ensure that the person making the application is not fictitious or benami has not been prosecuted or convicted for creating communal tension and has not been found guilty of diversion or misutilization of funds among other conditions then reduction in use of foreign contribution for administrative purposes under the act a person who receives foreign contribution must use it only for the purpose for which the contribution is received further they must not use more than 50% of the con- contribution to meeting administrative expenses the bill reduces this limit to 20% <coughs> surrender to certificate the bill adds a provision allowing the central government to permit a person to surrender the registration certificate the government may do so if post an inquiry it is satisfied that such a person has not contravened any provisions of the act and the management of its foreign contribution and related assets has been vested in an authority prescribed by the government suspension of registration under the act the government may suspend the registration of a person for a period not exceeding 180 days the bill adds that such suspension may be extended up to an additional 180 days why it is significant prevent misuse the annual inflow of foreign contribution has almost doubled between these years 2010 and 2019 but many recipients of foreign contribution have not utilized the same for the purpose for which they were registered or granted prior permission under the fcra 2010 recently the union home ministry has suspended licenses of the six ngos who were alleged to have used foreign contributions for religious conversion strengthen national security many persons are not adhering to statutory sorry statutory compliances such as submission of annual returns and maintenance of proper accounts such a situation could have adversely affected the internal security of the country transparency and accountability the new bill aims to enhance transparency and accountability in the receipt and utilization of foreign contributions and facilitating the genuine non governmental organizations or associations who are working for the welfare of society <coughs> criticisms of the fcra bill 2020 increased bureaucratic discretion greater scrutiny by the government identification requirements other has been made mandatory for all office bearers directors or other key functionaries of ngos for registration surrender of certificate ngos can surrender registration only after a government inquiry a renewal of fcra license for renewals of licenses and inquiry needs to be conducted to ascertain misutilization of funds period of suspension of registration it has been doubled from 180 to 360 days power to prohibit government can preclude receipt and utilization of foreign contributions if the recipient is found guilty of violating any provisions of the act suppression of freedom of speech and expression such stipulations risk misusing the law 
to silence association involved in advocating political economic social environmental or cultural priorities which differ from those espoused by the government increased compliance burden on ngos lack of clarity on the laws applicability operational continuity of around 20000 ngos had been affected due to inability in either receiving funds or transferring funds to partner ngos within india tracking of funds so foreign funds will be tracked by via single fcr account in a bank branch designated by the government migration of of, of all fcra designated accounts will create more hurdles and paperwork for ngo banning regranting of funds ngos are prevented from regranting funds to other licensed ngos the increased transactional burden on foreign donors will create a significant deterrent to such funding limit on expenses amendment places 20% ceiling on administrative expenses previously capped at 50% this limits investments in personal travel technology legal and financial services reporting stationery and printing preventing ngos from building sustainability and performing key roles each of the above have significant financial and compliance implications for ngos as the above provisions will further widen to dekhiye ye jo bahut sare dekho aap points diya hua hai to maine ek bar sottam jain sir jo hai uska channel bhi aur kafi famous hai तो वहाँ पर एक बार सर ने कुछ कंटेंट पढ़ रहा था तो इन्होंने क्या किया था कि इस विजन की जो मटेरियल है इसको एनालाइज कर रहा था ठीक है तो सर ने दिखा रहा था कि देखिए कुछ मतलब काफ़ी पॉइंट्स ऐसा है जो कि मतलब बेकार का है ठीक है तो यहाँ पर भी मेरे को काफ़ी पॉइंट्स पढ़ते पढ़ते ऐसा ही लग रहा है बट फिर भी एक बार हम पढ़ लेंगे चलिए एच डी एब प्रोविजन्स विल फार्दर वाइडन द ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट बिटवीन एन जी ओज एंड द सेंटर फार्दर एफर्ट्स नीड्स टू बी टेकन आफ्टर कंसल्टेशन विथ ऑल द स्टेक होल्डर्स इन बॉड वाइल रेगुलेशन एंड रिफॉर्म इन द एन जी ओ सेक्टर आर नीडेड वी नीड टू टेक इन टू अकाउंट इट्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू ह्यूमन राइट्स एंड पब्लिक अवेयरनेस इज सिग्निफिकेंट इन इंडिया क्योंकि सर का रिसेंट वीडियो मैंने देख रहा था वो एक मैम को इन्वाइट किया था उसके चैनल पर और उन्होंने बता रहा था कि कैसे उन्होंने आई थिंक वो बोला ये जी एस टू ही था शायद है ना तो वो मैम ने दिखा रहा था कि कैसे मतलब डिस्कशन का ये था कि कैसे आपको आर्गूमेंट देना है और आर्गूमेंट के बेसिस पे आपको एविडेंस देना है या फिर डेटा जो है सपोर्टिंग डेटा देना है बट यहाँ पर देखो ये जो कारण यहाँ पर बता रहे हैं इसके बीच आर्गूमेंट मतलब उतना स्ट्रांग नहीं है जितना स्ट्रांग आपका आर्गूमेंट होगा तो वो मैटर करेगा नाउ फॉरन एड फ्रॉम इंडिया India has been one of the major receive of development aid but the trend is changing with India giving more aid to foreign countries than it has received in the financial year 2015 16 India gave rupees 7719.65 crores as aid for it received 2144.77 crore in aid from foreign countries and global banks development aid to foreign countries not only serves economic objectives but also as a strategic tool India wants to project itself as major economic power and rightful claimant to permanent membership to UNSC. देखो है ना ये strategic tool है एक aid देना है मतलब हम ले भी रहे हैं और दे भी रहे हैं तो important है दोनों कि हम developing है तो बस अगर ले रहा है तो दे नहीं सकते ऐसे बात नहीं है ठीक है जो देना चाहते हो उससे ले लो और जिसका जरूरत है उससे दे दो तो दोनों के साथ संबंध बन गया ना रिलेशन रिलेशन बन गया अच्छा हो गया दोनों के साथ ही <laughs> चलो इंडिया वांट्स टू प्रोजेक्ट इट सेल्फ एज मेजर इकोनॉमिक पावर एंड राइट फुल क्लेमेंट टू परमानेंट मेंबरशिप टू यू एन एस सी नेबरहुड फर्स्ट पॉलिसी द नेबरहुड इज द बिगेस्ट रिसिपियंट ऑफ एड फ्रॉम इंडिया भूटान फॉर इयर्स हैव रिसीव द बिगेस्ट चैंक ऑफ इंडियन एड विथ रुपीज टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एट्टी फोर पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव क्रॉर्स इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटी टू ट्वेंटी प्राइमरीली एम्ड एट डेवलपिंग हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर ऑल्सो इंडिया इज सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट डोनर इन अफगानिस्तान ethnic issues in sri lanka india is undertaking the construction of houses for rehabilitation of tamil population displaced by nearly 3 decades long war soft power india offer aid to extend the reach of its soft power another major reason is to counter the influence of china in india's neighborhood south asia is disaster prone and many countries in the region cannot carry out relief work on its own okay 
Now, microfinance institutions. What are microfinance institutions? Microfinance, also called microcredit, is a type of banking service that is provided to unemployed or low income individuals or groups who otherwise would have no other access to financial services. Microfinance institutions are financial institutions working towards the upliftment of the needy and underprivileged section of the society by providing short term loans to set up their own venture. They take a minimum of very calculated risk and fund the interested borrowers to help them get trained, set up and run a small scale business. MFIs operate in a number of forms and shapes in India. Joint liability groups, self-help groups, the Grameen Bank model, rural cooperatives. Uh, the, the, the lending system of the MFIs is completely different from that of the traditional banking sector. In microfinancing sector, <laughs> An official gets appointed by the concerned financial institution who can get in touch with the group to discuss the loan application and dispersal procedure. He or she understands the skills and requirements of the applicant first and then on the basis of that he or she finalizes the amount. The appointed officer not only understands the business that the borrower is currently conducting or interested to start in future, but he or she also analyzes the risk factor associated with it. है नहीं क्योंकि इधर हमारे लोकल में जो देखोगे कि बहुत सारे माइक्रो फाइनेंस बैंक चलता है तो उसका जो एजेंट होता है या फिर जो आता है जिसकी बात यहाँ पर हो रहा है उसका क्वालिफिकेशन मैक्सिमम ट्वेल्थ पास होगा या फिर वैसा है तो फिर वो इतना नहीं समझते भाई ये तो मतलब ज़्यादा ही ठीक है प्लानिंग में लिख दिया अब देखो रोल ऑफ माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन इन डेवलपमेंट वोमेन एम्पावरमेंट Micro finance institutions are playing a major role in empowering the women force in India by offering financial services to the poor and privileged women of the country. The institutions have opened the door for their economic growth. Uneducated poor and unemployed women usually don't get access to loans from typical lending organizations, and this is where the MFIs have come to their help. Ah, yes, such a. कि सबको मिल जाता है जो भी जाता है तो रूरल डेवलपमेंट मोर देन सब्सिडीज पुअर नीड एक्सेस टू क्रेडिट एब्सेंस ऑफ फॉर्मल एम्प्लॉयमेंट मेक देम नॉन बैंकेबल दिस फोर्सेस देम टू बोरो फ्रॉम लोकल मनी लेंडर्स एट एक्सॉर्बिटेंट इंटरेस्ट रेट्स तो ये भी एक अच्छी है कि चलो एटलीस्ट इंटरेस्ट जो रेट है वो है ना तो ऐसा जो मनी लेंडर्स है उससे तो कम है एम एफ आई एच एनहेंस क्रेडिट टू पोअर इवन इन द एबसेंस ऑफ फॉर्मल मॉडगेज और यहाँ पर कोई मॉडगेज भी नहीं लगता सो फाइनेंसिंग दी अनफाइनेंस द माइक्रो फाइनेंस सेक्टर कंसिस्टेंटली फोकस ऑन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द नीड्स ऑफ द पोअर एंड ऑन डिवाइसिंग बेटर वेज ऑफ डिलीवरिंग सर्विसेज इन लाइन विथ यर रिक्वायरमेंट्स डेवलपिंग द मोस्ट एफिशियंट एंड इफेक्टिव मैकानिजम टू डिलीवर फाइनेंस टू दी पोअर द वर्ल्ड बैंक एस्टिमेट्स दैट मोर देन फाइव हंड्रेड मिलियन पीपल हैव डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली बेनिफिटेड फ्रॉम Micro finance related operations. The benefits of micro finance extend beyond the direct effects of giving people a source for uh, capital. Entrepreneurs who create successful business in turn create jobs, trade, and overall economic improvement within a community. Empowering women in particular may lead to more stability and prosperity for families and subsequently in the society. Issues related to micro finance institutions. High rates of interest. एम एफ आई चार्ज वेरी हाई रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट देखो अभी बात कर रहा था कि यहाँ पर रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ठीक ठाक है बट हाँ मानी लेंडर से तो कम ही है बट फिर भी बहुत हाई है क्योंकि देखो ट्वेल्व टू थर्टी परसेंट इसका इंटरेस्ट रेट जाता है और कॉमर्शियल बैंक जो होता है वो उसमें इंटरेस्ट रेट एट टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट ही रहता है तो जैसे कि गोल्ड लोन गोल्ड लोन वगैरह हो गया तो वहाँ पर गोल्ड दे के तो कम पैस में लोन मिल जाता है बट माइक्रोफाइन इंटरेस्ट रेट बहुत लेता है रिसेंटली दी आर बी आई इंडिया रेगुलेटरी बैंक अनाउंस दी रिमूवल ऑफ अपर लिमिट ऑफ ट्वेंटी सिक्स परसेंट इंटरेस्ट ऑन एम एफ आई लोन दिस हैज ओर्स एन द सिचुएशन फॉर कस्टमर्स एंड लेड टू फार्मर सुसाइड इन स्टेट्स लाइक आंध्रा एंड महाराष्ट्र ओवर डिपेंडेंस ऑन बैंकिंग सेक्टर अराउंड एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ द फंड कम फ्रॉम बैंक मोस्ट ऑफ दीज आर प्राइवेट बैंक चार्ज ए हाई रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट एंड ऑल्सो द टर्म ऑफ लोन इज ऑफ शॉर्ट period it makes them incompetent and less reactive to cases of default and delinquency lack of awareness of financial services financial literacy is very low in india about 76% of the population do not understand basic financial concepts mfi struggle to make their business more financially viable due to this lack of awareness ye baat to hai regulatory issues rbi is the regulator of a for mfi but needs the and the autonomy of microfinance industry is supremely different from that of banks regulatory issues have led to suboptimal performance and failure in the development of new financial products and services appropriate model most of the mfi follow 
एस एच जी और जे एल बी मॉडल मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम सिलेक्शन ऑफ मॉडल इज नॉट साइंटिफिक इन नेचर इट अफेक्ट्स द सस्टेनेबिलिटी ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन द लॉन्ग रन एंड ऑल्सो इनक्रीज द रिस्क ऑफ बोरिंग्स फॉर द पुअर आर सेक्शन बियॉन्ड दे कैन बियर सजेशंस टू इंप्रूव द वर्किंग ऑफ माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन सुपरविजन देयर इज नीड फॉर फील्ड सुपरविजन ऑफ एम एफ आई टू चेक ग्राउंड रियलिटीज एंड द ऑपरेशनल एफिशियंसी ऑफ सच इंस्टीट्यूशन इंसेंटिवाइजिंग रूरल पेनेट्रेशन इंसेंटिव शुड भी ऑफर टू एम एफ आई फॉर ओपनिंग ब्रांचेस इन अनबैंक्ड विलेजेस सो एज टू इंक्रीज रूरल पेनेट्रेशन इंप्रूविंग सर्विसेज एम एफ आई भी एनकरेज टू ऑफर कम्प्लीट रेंज ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स टू दियर क्लाइंट्स ट्रांसपेरेंट प्राइसिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इंप्लीमेंटेशन टू मेंटेन यूनिफॉर्मिटी एंड एफिशियंसी आर एमंग दी अदर्स हुई दीज इंस्टीट्यूशन शुड एडॉप्ट फंड्स अवेलेबिलिटी इनएबिलिटी ऑफ एम एफ आई जिन गेटिंग सफिशेंट फंड्स इज ए मेजर हिंड्रेंस इन द माइक्रो फाइनेंस ग्रोथ एंड सो दीज इंस्टीट्यूशन शुड लुक फॉर ऑल्टरनेटिव सोर्स ऑफ फंड्स इट इंक्लूड्स आउटसाइड इक्विटी इन्वेस्टमेंट पोर्टफोलियो बायर्स एंड सिक्योरिटाइजेशन सिक्योरिटाइजेशन ऑफ लोन्स हुई ओनली अ फ्यू लार्ज एम एफ आईज आर करेंटली अवेलिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इट कैन इंड्यूस मैसिव इंपैक्ट ऑन द स्टेट ऑफ क्रेडिट मार्केट accessibility which remains the most significant issue when it comes to availability of formal loans at market price separate regulatory authority indian माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंडस्ट्री केम अ लॉन्ग वे फ्रॉम 1975 फाइव विद द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ आर आर बी रीजनल एंड रूरल बैंक स्मूथ फंक्शनिंग ऑफ इंडियन माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंडस्ट्री कैन बी एनेबल्ड थ्रू सेटिंग अप ऑफ अ सेपरेट रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटी टू डिस्करेज माइल प्रैक्टिस एंड पोलिटिकल इन्फ्लुएंस स्ट्रेंथनिंग द क्रेडिट चेक एंड डेप्ट कलेक्शन प्रोसेस एंड एडुकेटिंग द विलेजेस अबाउट प्रोडक्ट्स एंड कॉन्सिक्वेंस इज इंपॉर्टेंट सोसाइटीज ट्रस्ट डोनर्स चैरिटीज एंड अदर स्टेक होल्डर्स द लॉ कॉन्सर्निंग सोसाइटीज ट्रस्ट वर्कस इसको मैं प्रोनाउंस नहीं कर पा रहा हूँ देखना पड़ेगा गूगल में एंड अदर एंडोमेंट्स इन इंडिया कैन बी प्लेस्ड इन थ्री ब्रॉड ग्रुपिंग सोसाइटीज रजिस्टर्ड अंडर दिस सोसाइटी रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्ट 1860 एंड वेरियस स्टेट्स अमेंडमेंट्स ऑन इट आफ्टर 1947 देन दी दो जेंगेज इन प्योर रिलीजियस एंड चैरिटेबल वर्क रजिस्टर्ड अंडर द रिलीजियस एंडोमेंट्स एक्ट एटीन द चैरिटेबल एंड रिलीजियस ट्रस्ट एक्ट नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी वर्क एक्ट नाइनटीन एंड सिमिलर अदर स्टेट्स एक्ट Trust and charitable institutions registered under the Indian Trust Act 1882, Charitable Endowments Act 1890, the Bombay Public Trust Act 1950, and similar other state acts. Society. A society is basically an association formed by seven or more persons with some common objectives for promotion of literature, finance, science, etc. There may or may not be some common asset to start with, but in course of time, the society can acquire assets. They are registered under Society Registration Act 1860. Many of state legislation through post-independence amendments went for due. Which widespread governmental controls to deal with abuses, malfeasance, and non-feasance of society. The legal measures include states' power to inquiry and investigation, cancellation of registration and conquest, <coughs> uh, consequent dissolution of societies. then uh, separation of the governing body appointment of administrator, dissolution and deletion of defunct organizations. Trust, religious endowments and works. Trust endowments and works are legally created as modes of property manage arrangement or settlement dedicated for definite charitable and religious purposes. The details with regard to their incorporation, organizational structure, and distribution of functions and powers are governed by the provisions of the specific law under which they are registered. Broadly, such organization can assume a legal personality in the following five ways: by way of formal registration before the charity commissioner or inspector general of registration under the respective state public trust act, example the Bombay Public Trust Act, 1950, the Gujarat Public Trust Act, etc. By invoking interference of civil courts. to lay down schemes for governing a trust under sections 92 and 93 of the civil procedure code by registering the trust deed of a public charitable trust under the registration act 1908 by notifying an organization in the list of a charitable trust and religious endowments which are supervised by the endowments commissioner of the state or by a managing committee formed under the charitable endowments act 1890 or under other state laws on hindu religious and charitable endowments and by creating a work which could be managed under the provisions of the work act 1995 trust trust is a special form of organization which emerges out of a will they we, the will maker exclusively transfers the ownership of a property to be used for a particular purpose If the purpose is to benefit particular individuals, it becomes a private trust. And if it concerns some purpose of the common public or the community at large, it is called public trust. The difference between trust and society: the subjects on which an institution can be registered under the Society Registration Act, 1860, are particularly the same as those on which a trust could also be formed. The society prima facie. Uh, 
is a 28 democratic entity as all its members at least seven in number have an equal say in its running whereas in a trust control over the property remains fully in the hands of the trustees and depending on the clarity of the will such a management continues to be in existence for a long time government intervenes only when trustee change or the trust becomes too old to be managed as per st uh, stipulations of the original will or on grounds of malfeasance or abuse of trust <coughs> religious endowments religious endowments and works are variants of trust which are formed for specific religious purposes for providing support functions relating to the deity charity and the religion amongst hindus and muslims respectively unlike public trust they may not necessarily originate from formal registration nor do they specifically emphasize on a triangular relationship among the donor trustee and the beneficiary religious endowments arise from dedication of property for religious purposes the corresponding action among the Muslim community leads to the creation of works. Uh, works tie up the property and devote the un, um, usufruct to people. The Indian constitution recognizes <coughs> freedom to manage religious affairs as on one of the fundamental rights of its citizen. According to Article 26, subject to public order, morality and health, every religious denomination or any section thereof shall have the right to establish and maintain institution for religious and charitable purposes, to manage its own affairs in matters of religion, to own and acquire movable and immovable property, and to administer such property in accordance with law. Though the above provision gives freedom to create trust, charitable institutions for religious purposes, it puts some rider on administration of such property in accordance with law, Article 26D. Works in India. Under Muslim rule in India, the concept of work was more widely comprehended as <coughs> aligned with the spirit of charity endorsed by the Quran. Work implies the endowment of property, movable or immovable, tangible or intangible, to God by a Muslim under the premise that the transfer will benefit the needy. As it implies a surrender of property to God, a work deed is irre irrevocable and perpetual. Currently, 30,000 3 lakh. Works in India are being administered under various provisions of the Work Act 1995. This act is applicable throughout the country except for Jammu and Kashmir and Darga Khaja Sahib Ajmer. <clears throat> the management structure under the act consists of a work board as an apex body in each state. Every work board is a quasi-judicial body empowered to rule over work-related disputes. At the national level, there is Central Work Council which acts in an advisory capacity. The Work Act was amended in 2013. The amended Work Act has made provisions for strengthening the work institution and streamlining their functioning. Some of the important provisions incorporated in the Act are the definition of work has been modified to allow non-Muslims also to create work. If the tenancy, lease or license has expired or been terminated, this would be considered as <coughs> encroachment. The Central Work Council has been empowered to issue Directive to the state work boards on their financial performance, survey, maintenance of work deeds, revenue records, and encroachment of work properties, seeking annual report and audit report, any dispute arising out of a directive issued by the Central Work Council to be referred to a board of adjudication to be constituted by the central government to be presided over by a retired judge of the Supreme Court or a retired chief justice of a high court. The establishment of state work boards within six months from the date of commencement of this act. Sale, gift, mortgage, exchange and transfer of work properties have been prohibited to curb alienation of work properties. Lease of work properties is being allowed. However, lease of mosque, dargah, khanka, graveyard and imambara has been prohibited. The lease period has been enhanced uniformly up to 30 years for commercial activities, education or health purposes with the approval by the state government. Because of the long gestation periods of such projects and the long periods of return on capital employed, the maximum period of lease of agricultural land is fixed for 3 years. Further, lease beyond 3 years is to be intimated to the state government and it would become effective only after 45 days. Trade Unions In terms of Section 2 of the Trade Unions Act 1926, a trade union means a combination whether temporary or permanent, formed primarily for the purpose of regulating relations between workmen and employers or between workmen and workmen or between employers and employers or for imposing uh, restrictive conditions on the conduct of any trade or business um, and includes any federation of two or more trade unions. For instance, example, All India Trade Union Congress, uh, Bharatiya Mazdur Sangh, Center of India Trade Unions,
etc. Importantly, it is also provided that no member of the Council of Minister of the person holding an office of profit, not being an engagement or employment in an establishment or industry with which the trade union is connected in the Union of the States, shall be a member of the executive or other office bearer of a registered trade union. The first registered trade union is considered to be the Madras Labor Union, founded by B. P. Wadia in 1918. While the first trade union federation to be set up was the All India Trade Union Congress in 1920. The purpose of these unions is to look into the grievances of wagers and present a collective voice in front of the uh, in front of the management. Hence, it acts as the medium of communication between the workers and management, uh, regulation of relations, settlement of grievances, uh, raising new demands on behalf of workers, collective bargaining and negotiations are the other key principal functions that these trade unions perform. The Indian Trade Union Act 1926 is the principal act which controls and regulates the mechanisms of trade unions in India. Political lines and ideologies influence trade union movements. This is the reason why today political parties are forming and running trade unions. Following us, some of the shortcomings or the weakness of the trade union movement in India, lack of balanced growth. Trade unions are often associated with big industrial houses. A vast majority of the working population is without any union backing. The entire agricultural sector is highly unorganized in India. The agricultural workers are subject to all kinds of exploitation. The same is true with respect to those working in a small scale and cottage industries. Lack of balanced growth of trade unions in all sectors is one of the major weakness of the trade union movement in India. Low membership and poor financial position. Many employees are not willing to join unions because of fear of pay cut and fear of punishment. Trade unions may also have to depend on contributions from philanthropists. The poor financial position can only weaken the trade union movement. Political control. Most popular trade unions in India are affiliated to certain political parties. These political parties are only keen on making every grievance of the working class a political issue to attend political gains. As a result, the problem only gets wide public publicity and remains unsolved. Multiplicity of unions. Often, there exists more than one union within the same industry, each backed by a political party. These various unions have conflicting ideology. If one union comes out with a strike proposal, another union may work against it. As a result, none of the unions is actually able to solve the problems of the workers. Inter-union rivalry. The existence of many unions within a particular industry paves way for what is called inter-union rivalry. These unions do not work together for the cause of the workers. Each union may adopt a different approach to the problem. The inter-union rivalry may become a more serious problem of the workers. As a result, the employees are unable to derive the benefits of collective bargaining lack of uh, recognition and opposition from employ employers due to the above reasons most of the managements are not prepared to recognize trade unions most employers do not let their employees from a union form from from a union the employers are able to achieve this by adopting certain punitive measures like intimidating employees victimizing union leaders initiating disciplinary action against employees indulging in union activities and so on some employers also start rival unions with the support of certain employees Lack of able leaders and indifferent attitude of the members. Trade unions face the issues of lack of able leaders. Some members do not even make a prompt payment of the subscription amount. There are, on the other hand, members who do not attend the general body meetings, not do they bother to know what is discussed in such meetings. Members generally expect the office bearers to do all that is necessary to achieve the demands. ठीक है तो ये था कंटेंट पार्ट आप कुछ क्वेश्चंस यहाँ पर दिया गया है देखो 13, 14, 15 में क्या क्या आया था 16, 17, 19 में तो 19 का देखो व्हाट आर द मेथड चूज्ड बाय द फार्मर्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन to influence the policy makers in India and how effective are these methods बट अभी बात किया कि फार्मर्स के लिए कोई ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है नहीं ये कंटेंट में तो हमने पढ़ा ही नहीं फार्मर्स के लिए कोई ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो देखो पूछ लिया फिर क्या हुआ कंटेंट का पढ़ के फायदा आप देखो 2016 में क्या पढ़ा था कि इन द इंडियन गवर्नेंस सिस्टम द रोल ऑफ नॉन स्टेट एक्टर्स हैज बीन ओनली मार्जिनल वे नॉन स्टेट एक्टर्स कौन है हैं आस 